First of all, the importance of bees. Why are they important? The key thing is pollination. I've just been reading a, a United Nations report, environmental program report, which you can Google, it's free online, it's just been published, and it, it a quote there of 100 crop species which provide 90% of food worldwide, 71 of them are bee pollinated, which is critical. It just shows you how important bees are for in the food chain. The next statistics of these is the pasture, legumes in your pasture, your white clover. What's the value to you? $1.87 billion a year. That's how much nitrogen is going into your soil through clover. You put a pest like varroa, it's going to wipe out your bees, your clover will vanish. I mean, in about six years, that's all these seed vendors. And then you're going to have to start putting uh, nitrogen on reseeding. The market's going to actually talk a bit about that when he talks about demonstration farms, what we should do, so I won't cover this ground. And the other thing is with these, why they're important, are very much an indicator of the environment, if you like. Now, the, the canary of the coal mine, if you like. If bees, are, if bees are dying and vanishing from their ecosystem, if species are dying, what species is going to be next? If the bees today, what species are going to be in the future? The human race, probably mankind. So we've got to look after our environment. It's very critical. Bees are an indicator of things are not quite right in the environment. We're losing them. Now, one of the problems facing bees. Well, worldwide, bees are disappearing. Uh, we're losing bees. You probably read a lot about colony collapse disorder in America. There's a lot of things going on in New Zealand too. But the main major one is new diseases of pests. We've had varroa come into New Zealand now, and yeah, we've had it there oh, just over 10 years. It's only been in the South Island about five years now. Already it's into Otago, it's in Southland. Uh, within another couple of years, we'll be right through the South Island. You're losing a lot of bees. Most of you would have had wild bees on your farm before varroa came in. You're probably not seeing any bees. Am I right? You're starting not to have seen bees? But only a matter of time, you'll lose, you won't have any, any wild bees on your farm. Agrochemicals, that's a real problem with bees. Even things like surfactants. I know full country farmers don't do, use a lot of sprays, you don't use a lot of chemicals, but even if you're spraying things like gorse, using surfactants, they're deadly on bees. Because actually with surfactants, it suffocates bees. And the key thing too is the loss of pollen <coughs> and nectar resources. The sources. We're losing uh, pollen, nectar, the two critical food sources for bees. And with the problems with bees, it's a combination of stresses. It's the straw, glass straw that drains the camel's back. If the bees are bombarded with pollen, uh, new uh, pathogens, a lot of problems. Okay, now what do bees need? And how can you help in some of these? The first thing is, which you can help, bees, like any animal, they need, need good nutrition, pollen and nectar sources. That's critical. So good nutrition is the key thing. It's the key thing for keeping any animals healthy, feed them well. The same with bees. If you, can, if you can help in that area. What you probably can't help with is that uh, bees need a queen. And the queen's going to be young and very vigorous. A queen is a, an egg laying machine. What a queen bee does is lay 1,500 eggs a day. So she's got to be young, she's got to be vigorous, she's got to be able to produce a lot of, it, a lot of eggs. Uh, the other thing is with the queen, she must have the right genetics. Uh, that's important. If you want the bees to um, survive, gather a lot of honey, um, produce a lot of bees, and uh, not be, uh, be gentle, genetics is a key thing. And the other thing is with bees, you need a strong force of workers. And the key thing there is balance. In a hive, if you open up a hive, you have a balance of workers. You have very old bees, very young bees, and you have a very, and you have all equal numbers right the way through. You have, uh, you have brood, which lasts uh, 21 days or three weeks. The young brood, which is your young crops, and they're lying in their cells, crying out, feed me, feed me. And that stimulates the bees to go out and gather pollen and nectar. So you need your very, your brood. 
and they last uh, three weeks. In the next three weeks, you have what's known as the house bees, and they're the, they're the bees that work in the hive. When a bee's born, the first thing a bee does, it starts house cleaning. And that's distinctively knows to start cleaning the house out. So in, for three weeks they're in the hive, they're known as the house bees, and they do all the duties in the hive. They clean the hive out, they feed the young bees in the, in the hive, the brood. And then the last three weeks, which is the critical time, uh, they become foragers and fly out the outside and gather pollen and eat them. And usually they wear their wings out after that three weeks and they die. Now, you need the very young bees, you need the nurse bees and the foragers. If you start spraying and wipe out all the foragers, the whole pollen lies out of filter. That means the nurse bees then have to become foragers and they can't look after the brood and then the, the hive breaks down. So the key, key word here is a good balance. 